Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, it's another golden book that's not golden book sized, and yes, it's another Rainbow Bright book. You you can totally tell by the playlist, right? And, and the thumbnail? I, I think the thumbnail gives it away. I am Starlight, the best horse. The most amazing horse in all the world. And this is Rainbow Bright Gets Rescued by Gina Ingoglia, illustrator uncredited. The sprites were on their way home. They had been working all night loading Rainbow Bright's magic star sprinkles into bags. Now they could rest. A low, smoky cloud was moving slowly up the road. It was coming from Murky Dismal's grunge buggy. Mmm. Yeah, you can see him in the background. Though I must say that trees are much more detailed in this one. They don't have like the stars on them or anything, but there's a lot more fuzz to them and leaves. Really? Oh, I was thinking about the page where the tree had a smile on it. And instead I pulled to the one where the trees were frowning. I think you're right. Interesting, my brain just got rid of the fuzz. Yeah, you're right. All right, now back to the book we're actually reading. Murky held seven bags of star sprinkles in his lap. What luck, he said. Only one sprite was guarding these. All it took was a toss of sneezing powder. He was so busy sneezing, he couldn't call for help. You're a real genius, boss, said Lurky. I know, said Murky. Wait till we get home to the pits, and you'll see what I'm going to do with these sprinkles. He laughed out loud. I'll bet that sprite is still sneezing. And this time the smoke does look like smoke. It looks dirty and nasty and ugh. I don't remember the car having eyes. Murky Dismal was right. The poor little sprite was trying to talk as fast as he could between sneezes. But he was sneezing so much none of the other sprites could understand him. Finally, though, he stopped sneezing long enough to deliver his message. Oh no, said Twink. Rainbow Bright's favorite sprite. Murky Dismal has stolen seven bags of star sprinkles. We've got to tell Rainbow. At that moment, Rainbow Bright's helpers, the color kids, came along. Hmm. His hair is more orange than I remember it being in the other book. I'm talking about... Red Butler. Yep. Yeah. It's definitely orange, but it's a lighter orange in this version of the book. Yeah. It's more of a tangerine orange in the previous book and this one's more of like a solid what you would call a classic orange also it has a bit more highlighting in the other book yeah these are more solid colors there's less shading going on the color kids were the leaders of the sprites as soon as they heard the news they began to search for rainbow bright all over rainbow land red butler and his sprites looked in red region Canary Yellow and her sprites went all through Yellow Plains. Patio Green and her sprites dashed around Green Grange. Sprites, ordered Buddy Blue, cover every inch of the blue zone. Did we skip a page? No, huh. I don't remember a Rainbow Bright being gone. I remember the Star Sprinkles being gone. Yeah, but they said they have to tell Rainbow. Oh! And Rainbow wasn't with the color kids. I get the... It just seemed like a jump to me. Please continue. Shy Violet and her sprites hunted in Violet Valley. Indigo tried to find Rainbow Bright in Indigo Acres. We won't miss a spot in Orange Meadows, promised Lala Orange. And Twink went off to search on his own. Doesn't Twink or anyone else have like a way to like call her magically like a Rainbow Bright symbol? Or like a communicator or tapping on something? Apparently not. Or can't they just call for the horse? Can't the horse, like, hear them? I think he mainly just hears Rainbow. Meanwhile, Rainbow Bright and Starlight, her magical flying horse, were out scattering green star sprinkles in a grassy field. This whole place needs a little fixing up, said Rainbow. It's getting brown. Rainbow Bright hummed a little tune as she worked. Without realizing it, she was nearing the pits. I'll fly back to the mines and get some more star sprinkles, announced Starlight. Looks like we'll need more than we thought. And off he flew. Those don't exactly look like green. 
No, she is very clearly working with a mixed bag here. Hey, that could almost be a pun. Let's continue. Also, their layer in the background, murky and lurky. Mm-hmm. Inside his cave, Murky was very busy mixing all the star sprinkles together. Lurky, my boy, he said, you're going to learn about color. If you mix all the colors together, you get the most beautiful color in the world, gray. It looks yucky, boss, said Lurky. Right, laughed Murky. We'll scatter it all over everything. The whole world will be gloomy. He grabbed a big handful. Let's go outside and try it, said Murky. What are their motives again? Why do they want to make the world gray? Because their big bad boss said so. Who is their big bad boss? I forget. Because he, like, never shows up. These guys are just villains of the week. We don't have a nice big bad like we do in the premiere. I also noticed that his shoes are untied. I forgot about that. Yeah, they're always untied. Murky ran to a patch of red flowers. They look kind of nice, said Lurky. Don't be silly, said Murky. They'll look a lot nicer after I make them gray. He tossed some sprinkles on the flowers. Still red, said Lurky. Murky Dismal couldn't believe his eyes. Nothing happened, he gasped. He tossed some sprinkles on the grass. Still green, boss. Also, the star sprinkles are still colors. They're not gray. Yeah, definitely still multicolored. Murky ran around, throwing sprinkles all over the field. But the colors stayed the same. Murky let out a groan and threw himself on the ground. I think I know what's wrong, boss, said Lurky. The star sprinkles won't work without Rainbow Bright's magic belt. Or Rainbow Bright. Though I can't remember exactly what was special about her in the movie that made her special in the movie. Well, she came to that world on a journey. She's not from that world. Hmm. And the process of her journey made her worthy of the belt and the title, because it's not even her real name. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I left out after. Murky jumped up. You're right. I forgot all about that. I'll just have to think of a way to capture her and get that belt. If you capture Rainbow Bright, then isn't it kind of game over? She's the ultimate magical MacGuffin in the series. Yeah. Murky sat down to think. He didn't move for a long time. Any ideas yet, boss? asked Lurky. Stop that humming and let me think, said Murky. I'm not humming, said Lurky. It's coming from over there. And boss, guess who it is? It's Rainbow Bright. What luck, said Murky. Looks like she's headed right for one of our sprite traps, he cackled. And she doesn't have that pesky horse around to save her. What I laughed at is how happy and delightful Rainbow Bright is on that second page. I mean, she's just, wow, that is cute. Ah, I thought you were laughing at the first page where Lurky, there's um, motion lines drawn. It looks like Lurky is patting the top of Murky's head. And to me, it just looks like all this dust is being raised up by the fact that he's doing that. Ah. Before she knew what was happening, poor Rainbow Bright had fallen deep into a sprite trap and was being carried off to the pits in a giant net. She could hear Twink calling her from far away. Twink, she shouted, over here. But Twink didn't hear her. And of course it's going to be the horse. You know, the horse is going to come and save her, or Twink and the horse are going to get together. And Also, she's um, sticking quite far out of that net for it being a giant net. Wouldn't she, like, kind of fall out? Yeah. Twink kept searching. Rainbow, he called. Where are you? Answer me. Then he came to the field Rainbow Bright had been coloring. He could tell she had been there because of the nice, fresh grass. But then he noticed that a lot of it was left uncolored. Twink had an awful thought. This is very close to the pits. Maybe Murky Dismal has captured her. Just then, Starlight arrived, carrying bags full of star sprinkles. Where's Rainbow? he asked. Oh, Starlight, cried Twink. I think something terrible has happened. It's not like Rainbow Bright to leave a job half done. You're right, said Starlight. Murky must be up to his dirty tricks again. Let's go to the pits and see if we can find Rainbow. Um, Starlight went back to the mines to get more sprinkles, so wouldn't he know that Murky stole star sprinkles? I also love the way they color his tail. That is a very nice job. Just the technique and brush strokes in it. I really mm -hmm. like how it came out. Very difficult to keep it that neat on the plush. 
Murky Dismal's cave was at the top of a weedy hill. Twink and Starlight could see the grunge buggy parked out front. Quietly, they walked past the keep out sign and tiptoed over the creaking wooden bridge. Uh, the horse can fly. Carefully, they peeked inside the cave. Twink had guessed right. There was Rainbow Bright. I really do like how well they're rendering Starlight. Just the color and the mane and tail and the accuracy. He's a very nicely drawn horse. I'm going to put a gloom cloud over Rainbow Bright to keep her unhappy, Murky was saying to Lurky. Watch her while I go downstairs to get the potion. When Lurky wasn't looking, Twink waved to Rainbow Bright. She moved toward the cave opening. At that moment, Lurky looked up. Now don't go away, he warned. Oh, I won't, said Rainbow Bright. Also, aren't you supposed to restrain your prisoners? No cage, no ropes, no chair. And not a really good lock on the entrance to the cave there's no door it's just kind of boards which apparently they do all the time because all the pictures of the pit show those boards basically in the mouth of the mound especially since the mound has a face and rainbow bright's all smiling and twinks just wow i remember that happening to him a lot in the series yeah yeah Twink was close enough to Rainbow so he could slip her some star sprinkles from Starlight's pack. But they remembered to take her star sprinkles, but they didn't bother to take the belts. I remember that happening a lot, too. You know what to do with these, Twink whispered. Rainbow Bright winked back at him. Then with a whoosh, Rainbow threw a handful of star sprinkles all over Lurky. He began to giggle, and then he began to dance. While Lurky was whirling and twirling about, Starlight kicked open the wooden gate to the cave with his mighty hind legs. That's a gate? That is not a gate. Yeah, no. G gates imply it can open and close. Also, we were talking last book on how the star sprinkles never seem to change anything a color that they shouldn't. But here, Lurky's being changed from its natural color to a whole rainbow. But I remember that happening to him a lot, so I'm, going, I'm thinking he doesn't really have a natural color. Or else it's, it only works this way when we want it to. Rainbow Bright dashed out of the cave and hugged her friends. That was easy, she laughed. Let's get out of here, said Twink. I'd hate to be around when Murky gets back. Yeah, celebrate later, escape now. A minute later, Murky was looking around the cave. Where is she? he asked. Where's who? answered Lurky as he danced around. There's no one here but little old me, and I'm just as happy as I can be. What? shrieked Murky Dismal. Did you let that rainbow brat get away again? Well, his color's back to normal. Yeah, I guess it's only a temporary effect. And why is he so happy? Because he's also kind of dancing right now with the gloom cloud in the background. Um, that's more of roar and stomping feet. Oh! I can't see how that can be read that way. The angle of the page I was hitting, it looks more like he was smiling. No, more like gritting his teeth and going, Ah! What's that terrible noise? asked Twink. Probably Murky, said Rainbow Bright. He must be very angry. I'm sure he'll be after us any minute. Let's hope the grunge buggy won't start, said Starlight. Since I can't fly when I'm in the pits, he could catch up with us, you know. Then we'll just have to run as fast as we can, Rainbow replied. The three friends raced towards home. Well, I guess maybe it is a gate because it's back up now. Also, the scale is completely off because Murky's like, even with perspective, he wouldn't be that large compared to the cave. Also, we got an explanation of why Starlight wasn't flying. I forgot that little detail. Murky Dismal scrambled into the grunge buggy and looked wildly around for Lurky. Can't you get out here any faster, he shrieked. Lurky stumbled out of the pits and stuffed himself into the driver's seat. He pushed the starter button. The grunge buggy began to rattle and shake. We're off, cackled Murky. After several wheezes and a tiny snort, the grunge buggy was silent. It's broken again, boss, said Lurky. Murky began to shriek in anger, so loudly that even Lurky couldn't understand him. He climbed out of the car and staggered back to the pits, yelling all the way. <laughs> Poor grunge buggy. I really don't remember it having eyes. The color kids and the sprites came running up the road. Hooray for Twink, they all shouted. He's brought Rainbow Bright home. 
Um, they were all just looking for her. They didn't actually know she was in trouble. Yeah. Twink and Starlight smiled proudly. Rainbow Bright gave each of her friends a big hug of thanks. I wish I could remember what it's called, but I think it's the whole... Yeah. I want to say it's the name of two girls, like Susan and Sally. Hmm. It's an assumption that if you know something, someone else knows something. And the way I remember it being explained was that there were two boxes of cookies. And one of the boxes got moved, but only one of the girls knew that that happened. But the one girl assumed the other girl knew, because what she knows, someone else must obviously know. It's actually a common logic in young children. We tend to outgrow it between five and seven. Ah, uh, I think I still fall in that category. And I probably butchered the explanation a little bit. So what did you think of this wonderfully colorful book? Very funny. Um, rather lame capture, though. The, the net, no cage, no taking the belt, no taking the star sprinkles that we know of. Though apparently she didn't have enough to throw at Lurky, so... Lara was very consistent again. Though the line seemed a little rougher to me this time. A little softer, so I'd almost want to say that the artists for the two books are different, even though it's, both are very true to the style of the show. But I must say, Starlight was rendered very nicely in this one. The only thing I would say, maybe negatively, is the star seems a little large in some of the images. Hmm. And I vaguely remember from the movie, did he not have a star on his forehead and his mane was a different color? Yeah, he was a pure white horse with golden hooves. Ah. Actually, they may not have even been golden. I'm trying to remember when he uses them to spark the fire to warm the child. Hmm. Need to watch the pilot again. Yeah, I had to remember which VHS tape it's on recorded directly from television. Ah. And this has been Rainbow Bright Gets Rescued by Gina Ingoglia, illustrator uncredited. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is my last Rainbow Bright book, except for the record one that we probably won't be able to use copyright more so than usual. But there are a couple of Rainbow Bright books. There should be a Rainbow Bright playlist if Lux remembers. It's usually pretty easy to create a playlist. I just forget to sometimes. <laughs> Ah, so there are more Rainbow Bright books, there are more books that have 80s cartoon characters, there are more books, period, and if you want to go outside the realm of books, there's a whole section with pop culture stuff, movies, video games, TV series, American and foreign. Want a copy of the book? I'm not sure how in print golden books for franchises that are not currently active are but we'll see if we can hunt up an amazon link just want to do some shopping yes the ebates link is still there amazon and ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with ember's reading room or the contents of the lux analysis channel thanks again for listening